One of my favorite movies of the Marvel franchise are the Captain America movies, especially the first two that they did. And part of the reason why I like those movies so much, especially uh, when it comes to the fictional character Steve Rogers, who becomes Captain America, is that Steve Rogers starts out as a, a weakling. And so he wants to get into the army. And once he gets into the army, he's put into this experimental super soldier program. And he's placed against a lot of these other candidates. And one of the candidates is Hodges. And Hodges is supposed to be this, this perfect soldier. But this soldier was a bully. And as a result, he was not really qualified to be the person who was going to have the super soldier formula. Even though he was strong, he was athletic, he had all the qualities that you would look for. Steve Rogers, on the other hand, was not very athletic. He was, he was wimpy, he was weak, and, and as a result, did not look from the outside that he would be the perfect candidate for it. However, what we find in, in an ironic twist, what we see in this fictional account of Captain America is exactly the type of differences we see between Saul, who was the king that's been rejected by God, and David, the one who is a man after God's own heart. And we're going to look at those differences a little bit more fully as we continue our study this week in the book of 1 Samuel. Hi, my name is Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years' period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. By clicking the subscribe button and the bell for notifications, you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to be more like Jesus. Well, let's take a look at the account of the choosing of David and see how that contrasts with what happened with Saul and what we can learn from it. Let's check it out. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to, you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest. But behold, he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Well, we look in a very familiar account uh, concerning the anointing of David and the passing over of his brothers. And when he comes to his first brother, Samuel thinks, oh, this is surely him. And God warns him not to look at the height of his stature or his outward appearance because he's been rejected. And, and what's so interesting about this is if we go back and look at the first king of Israel, at Saul, this is exactly what the people wanted and what they looked for. Let's check it out real quick at the anointing of Saul. In 1 Samuel 10, Then Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, 
and the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. So he brought the tribe of Benjamin nearby its clans, and the clans of the Matrites was taken by Lot, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken by Lot. But when they sought him, he could not be found. So they inquired again of the Lord, Is there a man still to come? And the Lord said, Behold, he has hidden himself among the baggage. Then they ran and took him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said to all the people, Do you see whom the Lord has chosen? There is none like him from among all the people. And all the people shouted, Long live the king. See, the people of Israel, when they first asked for a king, they wanted a king in the same vein as all the other nations around him. A warrior king, somebody who who is known for his boldness, his stature, his great physical feats. The, somebody who can intimidate other armies by his, by his mere presence. That's exactly the type of, of kings that the surrounding nations had surrounded themselves with. So when they asked for a king... Of that type of stature, God gave them exactly what they wanted. But what they wanted was rejected by God because he didn't have the heart that God was looking for. So when we see Samuel going up, being instructed by God to say, I'm going to choose this king. This is going to be of my choice. This is the type of person I want. I, I, I've given the people what they wanted, but I've rejected Saul. And now I'm choosing somebody who I want. And so when he gets there, he looks at the oldest, at the eldest son, who was tall and, and masculine features and the height of his stature must have been amazing. And God says, I've rejected him because I don't look as man looks. And too many times we run into the same problems ourselves. We, we judge things not by God's standards, but by the world's standards. We've adopted so many of the world's standards, but we don't even know it sometimes that we've done so. And we need to make sure that the standards that we have for people that we're looking up to, people who would be our mentors, people who would be good leaders, if we have the choice of installing those leaders, whether we're talking about in government or whether we're just talking about being a boss above other people, we need to put people in that position who are reflecting God's standards and not look at the way that the world looks. The world might want a ruthless person, want somebody who gets ahead at all costs, Somebody who can, who can manhandle you know, any challenges that come their way. But that's not necessarily the way that God wants. God wants somebody who's looking after his interests, the man after his own heart. And that may not look like the world's definition of leadership, the world's definition of a good mentor. So my encouragement to you, uh, fellow Christian, is to look for those who would be leaders in your life, who have the character of, that God wants in their life, even if it's not the characteristics that the world desires and deems favorable. God bless you. I hope that helps you today. And I pray that you might become that very leader that God wants for all of us. God bless you. And we'll talk with you again tomorrow.